This is how I save 80% of my income. The pandemic has affected people way more than it has affected me. I am fortunate enough to still be able to work. And because everything is closed, I've actually been spending less and therefore saving more. My social life has definitely taken a hit and I fully wish that everything would just return back to normal, but I can't deny the fact that I am financially better because of this quarantine. I'm extremely grateful for the situation that I'm in and I don't want this video to come across as me bragging in any way. I just want to help people save money, build their financial foundation and crush their goals. And to be honest, people who save a high percentage of their income probably don't have a lifestyle to boast about. With that being said, I'm Sean. I teach personal finance and investing on this channel. Let's take a look and see how I'm able to achieve such a high savings rate. So one day I woke up and I was genuinely curious about how much money people typically save. So I started a mission, went on Google, searched for the average savings rate and found it was 7.6%. To compare with this number, I went ahead and calculated my savings rate and it came out to be 80%. Now a few things to note, whenever I get my paycheck, there are deductions in it that I have no control over. This is federal tax, state tax, social security, vision insurance, and a couple other things. And because I have no control over this, I don't count it. So when I'm calculating my savings rate, I do the amount of money I save over gross earnings minus deductions. Some people think that saving is defined by either hoarding cash or accumulating money within a bank account. But I believe there's a lot of nuance when it comes to the term saving. You might be saving up for a goal in the future, say in three months you wanna take a vacation. So technically you are saving money within those three months, but you are spending all of it on that vacation. So in that sense, saving is deferred spending. So to keep things simple, any money that I have not spent in the past couple of months is considered savings, and any investment purchases that I've made where my money makes more money is also considered saving. Because investing in the stock market makes you more money in the long run and therefore increase your net worth, I consider that saving. And if you yourself have a house and a mortgage, any part of your mortgage that goes directly into the equity of the house is also considered saving, while the money that goes into the interest you pay on your mortgage payments is not. For me, saving is the opposite of spending money on things that lose value over time. The biggest reason why I'm able to save 80% of my income every single month is because I pay myself first. I recently read the book, The Richest Man in Babylon, and in that book and many other personal finance books, it encourages people to pay yourself first. For every single paycheck you get, before you spend that money on anything else, take 10% of your earnings and put that into your savings account or your investments. How paying yourself works is that you determine the amount of money that you wanna save every single paycheck. How I determined the number is that I wanted to max out my Roth IRA and 401k, so I set up automatic contributions for my paycheck directly into those investment accounts. I also wanted to save up a couple hundred dollars every single month so that I could later afford a nice vacation or laser eye surgery. I myself don't budget at all because I pay myself first. There's actually a term for this and it's called the anti-budget. You determine the amount of money you wanna save, skim that off the top, and then survive on the remaining amount. This is for people who are natural savers like me. It's fantastic because you are saving the amount of money you are content with, and then you can guiltlessly spend the remaining money on the finer things in life. If you are someone who hates Excel sheets and meticulously tracking every single purchase, then you should also consider implementing the anti-budget or pay yourself first into your life. One big reason why I am trying to max out my retirement accounts every single year is because I want to attain financial independence. Financial independence is where you have a large lump sum of money in investments such as real estate or the stock market and those investments generate enough passive income that you can indefinitely live your life. There's a study called the Trinity Study where withdrawing 4% of a healthy stock bond portfolio can indefinitely fund your life. 
For instance, if you spend $40,000 a year, having $1 million in investments will indefinitely fund your life. This is because withdrawing 4% of $1 million is withdrawing $40,000. This works out because the average return of the stock market is 7% adjusted for inflation. And after you withdraw 4%, that leaves 3% a year, which is essentially just wiggle room. The stock market doesn't return exactly 7% every single year. It goes up, it goes down, it's extremely volatile, which is why we withdraw 4% rather than a higher number. Being financially independent provides options. Because you technically don't need the money, work becomes optional. I myself may plan to change my careers down the road, work for a nonprofit in a cause I care about, be a stay at home dad and watch my kids grow, go travel for a couple months, or even run my own entrepreneurial endeavors. In the end, financial independence leads to freedom, which is what I'm all about. There are three things that people spend the majority of their money on, housing, transportation, and food. A couple months ago, I was living right outside of Washington, D.C., paying $1,000 in rent and utilities. Now, ever since quarantine hit, nothing has been happening in that area, so I decided to cut the lease early and move back in with my parents. And while I'm still paying $500 every single month to my parents, I'm happy to do so because they've done a lot for me and I'm still paying half of what I would pay if I was renting off on my own. In America, it's attractive or better view to be independent and offering your own, but this pandemic has really, you know, broken the stigma of living at home with your parents. Some people are doing it to save more money and some people simply have to because they can't afford not to. Living with my parents has been good. After college, I actually lived with them for a year to save up money and I almost felt embarrassed to do so. But ever since quarantine hit and I've seen a lot of people move back in, the stigma of living at home has been nearly erased. If you can save a lot of money on housing, that's a big win. So the second biggest thing that people spend money on is their transportation. And when I graduated from college, I needed to buy a car so I could get to work. So I went online and decided to buy the dopest car I could find. A 2010 Toyota Yaris. This car cost me less than $3,800 and I was able to buy it fully in cash. It also had less than 75,000 miles on it, which was a huge plus. It's a small car, but honestly, I feel like I have plenty of room because I don't pack a lot of things in the back seats anyway. Because it's a small car, it has a pretty great miles per gallon. And because it's an older car, I pay a lot less in car insurance than my peers who have bought in brand new vehicles. It's hot as balls in here, so I'm gonna get out. For food, all I gotta say, bulk buy and bulk cook. By doing this, this has been the biggest reason why I'm able to save money on food. I hit up Costco, buy a ton of food, and only go grocery shopping once or twice every two weeks for fresh veggies and fruits. Not only does this save you money, but bulk cooking saves you a lot of time and energy because you only have to cook once and then you can just reheat the meals for the next few meals. Lately, I have been still bulk buying, but I've been getting into the process of cooking, trying different seasonings, different ways to cook, different foods, recipes to try out. And so I've been enjoying cooking and once a day or twice a day, been actually eating food straight off of the oven or stove. There's honestly no better time to eat than right after it's cooked. Now don't get me wrong, I love eating out, but because, of, I'm, because I'm saving money by bulk buying, I'm able to splurge a bit more when I do eat out and hit up my all-time fave KBBQ. For general spending, the biggest tip that I can offer you that I implement myself is the three-day rule. Whenever I wanna buy something, whether it be clothes, an item, a new device, I wait three days before I finally purchase it. Most of the time, I completely forget I want the item and I don't end up spending money or purchasing it. But after three days, if you still really want that item and it's gonna bring value to you, then buy it. 
the three day rule is simply just a barrier to spending and it really helped reduce me remove my impulse spending habits. I wanted to share my sources of entertainment because I think entertainment are those little fees that add up over time. While I believe that if you really love doing something, you'll be able to find a way to afford it no matter what. You can afford nearly everything. No, no, that's right. You can afford nearly anything, but you can't afford everything. You have to pick and choose your battles. One thing that I've been getting into recently is just going on long walks, listening to podcasts or listening to music in the meantime, going kayaking or hiking whenever I feel like it. This past weekend, I actually went shark tooth hunting. There is these cliffs that run alongside the river and at low tide, you're actually able to walk at the base of those cliffs and all sorts of fossils and shark teeth will just be there. You can just find them on the shore, which was incredible. I actually found a couple myself. Another thing I like to do that I just recently mentioned is to continuously learn. Whether that's through podcasts, books, YouTube videos, or online courses, I've been doing a lot of different things and anything that interests me, I try and learn more about. On top of that, when I really want to just like lay back and not have to think at all, I'll play video games or board games or watch Netflix or a lot of anime. You can find a lot of TV shows, movies, or games that are very cheap or free. And those can provide endless hours of entertainment. Even my most social hobby isn't that expensive. And it's definitely one of the last things to come back from quarantine. It's salsa dancing. And even when I was going salsa dancing, I wasn't spending a lot of money on it. I would drive into DC and hit up all of these free social dances and how they made money was by people going to the bar and buying drinks. But I really never did that and I only got water. So basically I was able to go social dancing for free. One of the major things that has really impacted my life and changed how I spend my time is transitioning from being a sole consumer into a creator. Now a lot of people, they're consumers. They consume content, they watch videos, movies, books or podcasts, video games, etc. But uh, you don't see a lot of people creating, making art, painting, photographing, writing, being a content creator. And you're watching this video being consumer and I'm behind the camera making these videos being a creator. And consuming is not bad. It's, it does provide a lot of value to you. You can learn a lot from consuming and have endless hours of entertainment, but you can learn just as much if not more and be more entertained by creating something for yourself. Whether that be a blog or your own YouTube channel or learning how to play music. Being a creator has really helped me flex my creative muscles and it's something that brings me immense joy whenever I put out a video or take a photo I really like. So I encourage you to try creating something, whether that be art, performance art through dance, or music, or anything else, anything that you've been interested in, pursue it. All right, bugs are devouring me, so I'm heading inside. It's completely ordinary for people to spend money, usually spending more money than they have. When you compare saving versus spending money, saving money just isn't sexy. But the mindset shift that made me really want to save more money was simply setting goals. After college, after graduation, I really wanted to travel Southeast Asia, so I saved up money for that. After coming back from that trip and I started working, I really needed a car to get to work, so I saved up money for that. Now I'm pursuing financial independence, so work becomes optional. I'm on the pursuit of freedom. This is how I've saved 80% of my income the past several months. And with that said, I'd like to leave you with one last phrase to think about. Achieving financial freedom doesn't require you to do anything extraordinary. It simply requires you to stop doing everyday things that are considered ordinary.